Okay, good morning to everyone. My name is Davide Saguatti and my, the title of my research carried out during the PhD course is Advanced Semiconductor Technologies and Devices for Optoelectronic Applications. This is the outline of my talk after a brief introduction of uh, the optoelectronics in general, which is the core of the research. I will go on uh, showing you two devices which have been investigated during uh, the research activities, which are the field-plated indium phosphide hands for high voltage and high efficiency applications, and the gun-based light emitting diode for hybridness applications. So let's now go on with the optoelectronics introduction. Uh, optoelectronics is a very broad field uh, which uh, combines light, waves, and images with electronics, and is very it's really powerful because it allows other systems for working effectively. Of course, it shares knowledge with other areas such as semiconductor physics, optics, material science, and other branches of phys physics and uh, uh, optics. The market is really, really large, um, combining all the consumer products, cameras, um, recorders, and all commercial products which um, deals with lights and images. Uh, it's expected to reach by 2015 almost $1,000 billion. So it's a, a really, uh, and it's linearly increasing and expected to grow like this for many years more. Um, another, yeah, the, the red wire which links optoelectronics with electronics in, these, in the current years is the more the more. Um, which my colleague Luke has explained before. It's uh, another dimension of the roadmap of semiconductors. On the vertical axis, you can see the more than more miniaturization, which is the traditional scaling, going from one one 130 nanometers down to 22 and beyond the CMOS uh, technology. On the horizontal axis, you can see the more than more diversification, uh, which deals with RF, an optical communication, power devices, passive sensors, actuators, all devices which incorporate functionalities to the normal logic uh, devices, combining system on chip and system in package for higher value systems. So the research motivation combines the optoelectronic fields with the more than more dimension. More than more shares uh, the three main um, parts of the optoelectronic fields, which are emitters, sensor, and ICs. Among the ICs, we can find uh, silicon CCD, CMOS, and as well as um, indium phosphide hands and HPTs. The indium phosphide hands will be the first device, have been the first device uh, investigated during the research activity, while the second one can be found among the emitters, which is the light emitting diode. Um, they are really important devices because the first one is the leader device in terms of frequency and high-speed performance. And part of its technology, which is the INGAS um, channel, will be the core part for uh, scaling the next devices beyond the CMOS range. And blue light LEDs are now part of the solid-state lighting revolution, which is a, a really hot topic nowadays. So the first part of the research um, concerned with the design and analysis of high voltage and high speed hands, and the second part analyzing the so-called efficiency droop in blue LEDs, which is a, a loss of efficiency, and uh, it's a serious issue um, concerning the uh, advancement in the cost per lumen um, scaling and behavior. So let's now talk about the first device, which is the field-plated indium-phosphide hands. High light mobility transistors are uh, field effect transistor built using different materials, different band gap materials. So uh, two large band gap materials, which usually are the same, in this case, uh, indium uh, aluminum arsenide, are joined together, and in the middle is put a, um, a small band gap material, which is the indium gallium arsenide. In this way, thanks to this band engineering and modulation doping, electrons can be confined inside this so-called quantum well, and they are allowed to move only in a one plane. That's why they are called two-dimensional electron gas. Thanks to the high mobility which can be reached 
in this uh, heterostructure, which is seven times higher than silicon. These devices already show terahertz frequency uh, performance, and they are, as I said, one of the alternatives for continue the scaling beyond the 22 nanometer CMOS node. They are used uh, for IC optical circuits as well, and um, reaching hundreds of gigabit per second speed. They are really interesting because the one of the advantages that uh, indium phosphide is the um, substrate for the lasers, for some lasers. So on the same wafer, we can integrate the optical, the integrated circuit and the emitter. Uh, they are, of course, leader in the high-speed application, as I said, so niche applications such as radio astronomy, satellite, military, and communication based on micro and millimeter waves. And again, they are one of the alternatives for substituting the silicon channel in uh, uh, MOSFET devices. This is just uh, taken from the International Technology Roadmap for Semiconductor of the last year showing that um, the heterogeneous integration of the three fives on silicon is already in 2013 scheduled as a development underway. So the research is already ended and we're now entering into, into a more industrial phase. The research activity about this device uh, is focused on the fact that conventional indium phosphide hands suffer from poor breakdown performance, usually around 2 to 4 volts. And high voltage operation is really appealing when designing high power and high efficiency devices. Also low power circuits such as low noise amplifiers can, be, um, can gain a beneficial effect from the high voltage operation because they would, need, they would not need uh, protection circuitry. So two uh, types of devices have been investigated. One, adding a field plate uh, on, a on a conventional device and a second device optimizing uh, the AP layer. Talking about the field plated devices, uh, the field plate is an extension of the gate electrode towards the drain side of the device. Uh, it basically has the same potential as the gate, but it helps reducing the electric field under the drain side and thus increasing the breakdown voltage. Of course, the price to pay is an increase in the gate capacitance, which um, worsens the cutoff frequency performance. Uh, it has already implemented in other technologies such as gallium nitride and gallium arsenide and transistors, uh, increasing the breakdown voltage up to hundreds of volts. Um, so this is a really interesting application because it would uh, enable the design of high voltage, high voltage and high efficiency power amplifiers, robust LNAs and receivers for optoelectronics. The first results compare uh, simulation and experimental uh, characterization of field plated uh, devices, reaching 19 volts for the fabricated devices on the right, starting from a 14 volts of for the conventional device. So it's around 35% of improvement. The gate leakage current can be uh, reduced as well when implementing the field plate by an order of magnitude for the longest uh, field plate. And another beneficial effect is a dispersion in the C2 pulse performance. On the right side, you can see there is a small discrepancy between the DC and pulse measurement on the non-field plated device, which can be uh, solved and, um, and um, eliminated adding the field plate, which reduces the injection into surface trap, of course, reducing the electric field. The, fre the frequency performance, as I said, is the price to pay when applying the field plate, and uh, um, both simulation and experimental characterization showed that basically only the Fmax um, worsens when applying the field plate. Uh, the FT is almost insensitive to uh, this modification. The reduction is around the 35%. This device um, from 30 gigahertz goes down to 20 gigahertz. So as you can see here, the FT is almost unchanged. So to conclude the, this first part concerning field plated hands and high voltage hands, 
uh, high voltage Inga Sinalas amps uh, featuring the field plate have been fabricated and designed and uh, breakdown voltage of 19 volt uh, there is a typo there it's a 35% improvement over the baseline amps and a decrease of 30% in the Fmax is uh, noticed when adding the field plate. When optimizing, uh, the AP layer of amps improve the DC characteristics as well as um, the noise figure, which uh, should be even better than conventional devices. Let's now move on to the last part of my talk, which concerns uh, light emitting diodes uh, based on uh, gallium, gallium nitride. As I said, uh, gallium nitride blue light emitting diodes are um, the core of the solid state lighting revolution because the white LEDs we can now start to find around in, in lightning systems are um, based on blue light emitting diodes, adding then a yellow uh, phosphor to get the white light. And you can see there the market shares uh, up to 2016, uh, split among tablets, PCs, automotive, lighting, all the uh, different fields in which gallium nitride LEDs are employed. For um, following the roadmap for these devices, we need to, redu to reduce the cost per lumen. And to do that, of course, an increase in the output power per chip area is required. This has to face a um, serious issue, which is called efficiency droop, which is a loss in the internal quantum efficiency, which appears usually at high pumping currents, around 10 to 20 amps per centimeter squared. And of course, it reduces the competitive advantage of, of these devices. To explain the origin of this phenomena, the scientific community uh, recently uh, started a um, really intense debate showing uh, among the different causes, some, technology, some physical mechanisms such as defect recombination, Auger recombination, and carrier leakage. They can basically um, be related to the um, carrier density in a different way. The, SH, the SRH recombination can be related to the, it's proportional to the carrier density, which is the A coefficient in that relationship. The Auger combination is proportional to the third power of the carrier density, is the C coefficient, while the density activated defect combination is proportional to the second power and is the B coefficient. And then there is a small fraction of the injected current, which is the last term inside the brackets, which is uh, a carrier leakage mechanism. So basically, electrons avoid to be captured into the quantum well and they cannot contribute to generate light. So all these mechanisms together constitutes the droop, which is a loss in terms of um, efficiency, which starts um, at 10 to 20 amps per centimeter square. So the research activity is uh, basically was based on investigating on this phenomenon. Uh, firstly, um, evaluating the IQE sensitivity to the different physical mechanisms separately and then trying to explain experimental uh, drop curves, combining them or using them separately. And then we try to apply uh, structural modification to the baseline structure, evaluating their impact in trying to improve this uh, droop performance. For the single quantum well uh, LED, uh, photoluminescence has been also investigated. So we basically started with a single quantum well device a uh, 3 nanometer ring and quantum well. And this is already the uh, first analysis of separate mechanisms. The Auger combination, the reduced uh, EBL band energy offset, which is the pink layer up on the spacer, and it's usually employed to block electrons um, escaping from the active region of the device. And reducing the quantum well capture time uh, sorry, increasing the capture time, reducing the capture rate, uh, improving the, um, let's say, enhancing the electron leakage from the quantum well. Each of these mechanisms taken uh, separately can cause a droop. Droop starts to appear, as I said, around 10 amps per centimeter square, 
lowering the efficiency. And all of these phenomena can make droop to appear, but uh, using very, uh, let's say, extreme values um, on the basis of the present literature. We applied some technology modification, trying to see uh, their effect on different um, sources of droop. For instance, uh, enhancing the quantum well thickness or p-doping the spacer. And each of them show a different results um, as compared to the different droop sources. The photolumination experiments was used to, um, to split mechanisms uh, outside and inside the quantum well because when we polarize, when we bias the device uh, electrically, so applying to anode and cathode a voltage, all the mechanisms are present both inside and outside the quantum well. When we um, when we stimulate the device only uh, giving an impinging light on the quantum well area, all the mechanisms outside the quantum well can be uh, taken out of account. Then we move on with the multiple quantum well LEDs, which, are, which is a four periods quantum well device. And we uh, went on with using six different physical mechanisms for analyzing the, um, the droop intensity. Each of them have been set to three different values, generating more than 700 combinations. So plotting all together, this combination led to the chart over there, which is hardly understandable. So we separately uh, analyzed all the different mechanisms as done for the single quantum well device. And each of them, again, show uh, to be able to generate droop at a certain amount. Mixed scenarios can be uh, highlighted from the previous chart. For instance, when we use literature values for the different phenomena, we, we are not able to generate any droop. When we instead use uh, single mechanisms with extreme values or combine them with more relaxed values, we can, um, in a certain amount, uh, get some droop from the simulated curves. Again, techn some technology modifications such as increasing the number of quantum well, uh, the thickness of quantum well, p-doping the barrier, um, have been implemented on the baseline structure trying to improve the device behavior. And all of this analysis led to uh, these conclusions. Both for the single quantum well and multiple quantum well device, we noticed that an, ed an ideal uh, Ingangan blue LED when using um, literature parameters for all the physical mechanisms should not be affected by droop. So droop curves compatible with experiments can be obtained only when forcing a single parameter to extreme values or combine more than one parameters using uh, more reasonable values. The uh, difficult part is due to the fact that uh, droop controlling parameters can be can change depending on different technologies and values adopted for other parameters. When we implement some technology modification depending on the technology and the sources of droop, the response may be different. And so um, that's why the design of droop remedies and interpretation may not be trivial. To conclude the whole talk, this is the state of art advancement summary table for the two devices investigated. Field-plated hemps have been successfully designed and fabricated by means of two-dimensional hydrodynamic simulations for the first time. Uh, the field plate enables an additional degree of freedom in the device design, useful for designing high voltage and high efficiency PAs, robust LNAs and transceivers. As far as GAN based LED are concerned, uh, a critical analysis of droop mechanisms have been, taken, have been carried out, suggesting that droop is caused by combination of multiple mechanisms and not uh, a single mechanism valid for all technologies. An insight into technological remedies have been also uh, performed, highlighting that non trivial droop mechanism remedy relationship are present. That's it. Thank you for your attention. Presentation. Uh, questions? 
Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, so we have the last candidate of this morning, uh, Mr. Valerio Setti. We changed topic again, and uh, we, we talk about optical fibers. Okay.